Hey, good morning, everyone, once again. Thank you for being here. And today we're going to discuss first how to open uh, our projects, our files, how to organize your files so that you don't have prob encounter problems in, in uh, accessing your files, data files, R files, script files, RMD files, whatever type of files that you'll be needing for a certain uh, for a certain output, let's say it can be a research output, or it can be a just a simple exercise output. Okay, so what we need to do is uh, uh, kindly open R R Studio. If you are if you open your R, most probably we will not have the same uh, the same uh, interface. This is an old file that I'm using, and uh, maybe you have a different file. So when you open, when you use R, it's best to always use uh, an R project to to save your files or to organize your files. Uh, years before, I didn't use it. So I, I would encounter <clears throat> several problems because uh, sometimes I would lose the file I'm working on. And when I lose that file, if I had already created 1,000 more than 1,000 lines of code, then that could prove to be disastrous for me because it's very difficult to, to uh, redo what you, have been, what you have been working on for a long time, perhaps, and then only for it to get lost because of some, some uh, incidents, like maybe a power failure or just uh, out of, uh, all of a sudden your, R, your computer crashed, your computer... Uh, lost power, etc. So that could that could pose as a problem where you when you're not in a project mode basis. So how do you open R? How do you make sure that the data or the project that you're doing or any work that you're doing is automatically saved? The best thing to do with that is to make sure that you open a uh, a project. Okay, so uh, if you have opened your R, okay, maybe we have different interfaces. So before I, I proceed, uh, if you like the interface that I'm having here, then the way to change your interface, which can be, uh, which it may be in the default uh, type. So you go to tools and then global options. So here in global options, <clears throat> You can find you several things that we can do. In fact, there's already a Python Python provision here. You can create Python codes in R Markdown. Okay, Python is also a software. We said a very powerful software, just like just like R. Okay, so here I'm interested in the appearance. Okay, but before I go to the appearance, uh, I think I mentioned to you last time that if you click console. Okay, I'm sorry, pane layout, I mean, pane layout. It will give you the current pane layout that appears in your screen. So personally, I prefer the source on the left-hand side, upper left, and then the console on the upper right. The reason is when I run a particular code chunk in, in the source window, so depending on the type on the of the uh, document that you're using, if you're using R script, then the result, the output will be generated, printed here in the console. If you're using R markdown, then it will be generated both here in the source window, the script window, and also in the console. Okay, so there's a disadvantage, there's, a, there's an advantage of using an R markdown file, especially if you would want to have your output printed either in a Word file, PDF file, or a, an HTML file. If you're not concerned about that, if you're not going to print your output, then no problem using <clears throat> the R script document. All right. So how do you change the the layout? Uh, as I said, I would suggest that you put the console here on the upper right, the environment uh, here on the lower left, and the files, plots, and packages, you can put it here in the upper uh, lower right okay 
And as I said, the reason why I would prefer the console to be on the upper right is because when the output of a particular code is generated, it's printed in the console also. So I could easily see it on the right side instead of on the bottom part. Okay, so that's my, I think that's my, that's my the, that's the reason why I would want the console to be on the upper right. All right, so if I go to appearance, <laughs> so here are the defaults. Uh, I made my font size to be 18. And then here, the editor, th editor theme, the, the, uh, the default is Chrome. Okay, so when you're using R for the first time, this is a type of uh, interface that you're going to get. I prefer the Cobalt one. Okay, so this one. So you can choose that and then click OK or Apply. And so now your interface will be uh, will be different. It will not be this color. Okay. By the way, you can change the uh, positions of your of your uh, panes by going to Tools and then Global Options again, and then here at the pane layout, browse. Oops, sorry. Uh, where am I? Paint layout here. Okay, sorry. If I want, for example, the console to be here, I just click this and then click console. <laughs> Automatically, the console will be transferred to the lower left. Okay. So I want the console to be here. So I'll just click this console. Okay. All right. So far, so clear, Cass. Could you kindly chat, please, if if my pace is just fine or if I'm going too fast? Kindly chat, please. Okay. Thank you. Right. Good. Good. So in case you have questions, please feel free to raise your hand or just chat there or unmute yourself. Uh, it's not it's not good practice to to hold on to your question. Okay, it's best that while the question, while the discussion is about that question, then please feel free to interrupt me because you'll be helping also your fellow students because that might that item might not be clear to them also. Okay? <laughs> All right, so, so we learned how to change the interface, change the format. We learned how to uh, make sure that the, uh, the console is on the upper right. Of course, uh, it's really, really your preference. If you want the console to be on the lower left, then that's fine. Nothing will change anyway. Not, it will not affect your solution. It will not affect your model. All right. Now, as I said, going back to my first discussion, as I said, when you work on files, <clears throat> okay, whatever file it might be, if it's uh, in, in the context of R, I meant, I meant it's, if it's an Excel file that we're going to use in order to load data in R, or if it's a CSV file or a picture file, image file, then it's best to collect all your documents, all your files about that specific work that you're doing in a particular folder. Okay, there's an inherent advantage in doing that. Okay, so we call it an R project. So an R project is supposed to be a folder that contains the root directory, okay, where of where that file of where that folder is located, and also any file that you may you may put into that folder. So how do you create an R project? Okay, so I said I said first things first, you have to do this because if you don't do this, there's a big chance that you might lose, or you might, uh, yeah, lose your the file that you're working on. And believe you me, it's uh, really very distressful. Uh, if you experience that, I I experienced that before. I had more than a thousand lines of codes, <clears throat> only for that to disappear. Okay, and imagine the, the. Uh, 
uh, maybe I, I, it's, uh, I think uh, I'll call it an agony <laughs> that I experienced because it was several weeks worth of work. Imagine in just a split second, it got lost. And you know why? Because I did not save my file in a project. That could not have happened if I was if it was saved in the project because automatically, if your file is in a project, it will save. So no chance for you to lose that file if you're working on it. Okay. So I hope I have uh, laid down the predicate and uh, and convinced you enough that it's very important to save your files that you're working on in a particular project. So the project can of course be topic topic centric if you're working let's say on a project about multiple regression or a topic about uh, about time series analysis or whatever then put the files that are related to that specific topic in that particular project okay so let's do this let's open first how do you create a project go to file there are several several ways to do this file one way here is to click file and then here project so let's click this. Okay. Then if you if you are using another file, okay, you're asked save image to our data. Okay. You can just click save if your if this file is saved in a particular project also. I'll just save it or don't save. It. Depends on on you. Okay. <clears throat> so here now we have <clears throat> create project okay so first we went to file and then new project and then here create project and we're going to store it in a new directory okay let's save it in a new directory okay now what what we're going to create is a new project in a new directory so let's click this new project click it and then what will be your directory name okay so the directory name is very important because you're supposed to store <clears throat> all your files there. In our case, we can create a, uh, a, a folder or a directory for our FinSAR K32 subject. Okay, And then we can put there other projects that are topic-centric. What I mean by that is we have one mother, quote-unquote, mother folder. And then under inside that folder can be several for folders that are we will be creating for our specific topics okay so it's up to you but i'm going to create this fin so finlets i'm sorry finlets finlets k32 k32 underscore term one ay 2022 2023 to 2024 okay so let me just use that Finlitz, okay, I think I should. Uh, okay, let me make it similar to the first one that I created. Finlitz should be K32. Okay, then term one, AY 2023 to 2024. All right, next is where, I, where am I going to save this? In which in which uh, in, in which file location so i'd like to okay go to browse and then i'm just going to save this in my desktop it's up to you where you want to save it for for my purposes i'm going to save it in my desktop here so notice here the folder is in the desktop okay and then i'm going to open so it will be saved in my desktop then open all right, so let's check. Finlitz K32 T1 AY 2023 to 2024. And then we have here, the, the directory is in C. In my case, it's users, admin, and then desktop. So it's there in the desktop, all right? And then let me click this. Open in a new session, which means it will open the R project. Okay, and then create project here. Create project. And what happens? So this will close because I asked R to close this. So we will now generate a new R project. 
Okay, let's wait for that R project. Okay, kindly chat please if you were able to generate the okay wait, let me just put a uh, okay, small good neighbor. All right, thank you. All right, good. Okay, so we are now able to create a project. Okay, so the name of the project is this one. Finlitz K32 T1 AY. Okay, and it's in it's an it's in R it's uh by R Studio. Okay, and then here we can see here the directory, the root. Okay. The the root directory of our of the project is Finlitz K32. And then you can see here the file extension R proj. Okay. So let's just first take a look at our interface. Who among you have the same interface as mine? You have only three window panes. Can you chat, please? Do you have only three window panes? Okay, thank you. Yeah, that will be the default when you open a project. Okay. However, okay, the other window pane is not actually lost. How do you find that other window pane? If you go here, upper right. You can see here that there's a uh, there's a file that's a file uh, or a folder folder icon. If you click this, okay, then it will now uh, minimize the. Uh, a, a while ago, this was maximized. This was the appearance. It's the environment window. Okay, so when I click this one, okay, so this was uh, uh, not minimized, but it had it has now a lower, a smaller size. Okay, and then we can now see our script window or the source window. So we now have the four window panes. Of course, if I click this, for example, okay, it will now maximize my script window and my uh, environment window is uh, now hidden. If I click this again, Okay, so it's very easy to uh, hide if you want, because sometimes you might be working on a on a long uh, code chunk or code. <clears throat> then, uh, if you want to uh, let's say increase the space for your code viewing space, then you can just minimize this there. So you have this one, or you can even adjust this so that the screen that you're seeing is only from the script, at least majority of it from the script window. And that also goes for the other window panes. Okay, you can also minimize, maximize the console, etc. All right, so let me, okay, so we now have four window panes. This is the source window or the script window. This is the uh, environment window, this is the console, and this is the files, <coughs> plots, and uh, packages. So each of these window pane have their own role to play in making our, in facilitating our use of R and R Studio. Okay, so now in our class, we will also create subfolders. Because the folder that we create is for, for the whole, whole project. But what if I want to create another folder inside this fin, Finlitz folder? So this is the main folder. This is the subject folder. And I'd like to create, let's do this. Let's create a, a project for time series. So once again, we go to file and then new project. New project again. And then we go here to the new project wizard. We once again create a new directory. Okay, new directory and the new project. Okay, let's name the project as, let's say, time series. Let's see, Arima, Garch, Var. Back end. Maybe IRR, IRF also, impulse response function. 
All right, just an, as an example. And then we're asked, where are we going to create this directory or subdirectory? We want to create it not on the desktop itself, but rather inside the first project that we created, the main project. So I'll go here to browse. Okay, so desktop. And then I want to create a project inside Finlitz K30, where's that? Finlitz K32, T1 here, T18 2023 to 2024. So I'll click this. So notice it's now here, folder. So it's not folder desktop in my case, but it's already folder desktop and then Finlitz. All right, so if I open this, Okay, you now see that the location of the direct of the project is now in under desktop and under Finlitz K32. So it's now inside that R project. Okay. All right. So if I, I again open a new session, this will open the R project. Okay, and then create project. And then it will open a new R project. And the title of that project is there, time series. This is the new R project that we created, time series, Arima, Garch, Bar, Vec, M, I, R, F. The root directory is this one. Okay. It's this one. Time series, Arima, and then that's that R project. So if I delete this, if I, if I close this, all right. So that leaves me with just the finlets. Okay, let me close this again. Let me close this also. I'll click, I'll, I'll uh, close that. Okay, this was the other one a while ago. Okay, I'll just save it. So I closed everything, all right? So there's no more R, R project open. If I now go to my, okay, uh, let me now go to uh, my desktop. Okay, and it's here. If I open, if I want to open Finlitz K32 T1 A23 to 24, if I click this, okay, if I click this, then it will open the the Finsar, a Finlitz uh, R project. But I want to open instead the time series project. If I click this, and you can you can now see that there's also this R project here. Okay, so this is an R project file. Okay, so if I click this, what will happen if you click the directory, the uh, project directory itself? It will open the R project. Okay, this one, right? Time series Arima. And then this one, the same thing that we we had a while ago when we first opened the project. All right. So let me pause for a while. Is everything clear so far? Are you able to are you able to follow along? Any questions? Let me just pause for a while. I might be going too fast. Okay, thank you. Okay, good, good. Please feel free to ask questions if I'm going too fast. Uh, please feel free to interrupt me, to raise your hand or to unmute yourself so that we can address any question that you have. Okay, so when I open this project by clicking the R project uh, direct, the main directory, you notice that it opened again an R project and the same, the default is that the environment is maximized. So let, let me just click this. All right, so we now have here the script window. Okay, now this is your R file, okay? Now what are the different files that you can create out of this? As I mentioned before, you can go here to file and then there are several things that we can do here. We can make use of an R script. This is already an R script, okay? You can use an R script or we can use a Quarto document which uh, 
hopefully we will be able to discuss in the future. These are just formats. These are the new formats. Also the Quarto document and the Quarto presentation. If for example, I open this. Okay, let me just try one, trial one. You will notice that create. The interface of the Quarto doc is quite different from the RMD file that I presented to you last time. So let's take a look at this. Quarto document is a lot easier to uh, to format. Okay, so this is also the YAML as discussed before. And then, so you notice that the that the interface is quite different. Compare that with, if I open here, file, and then R markdown, which we're going to use there. Let me call it trial two. Okay. All right. So it's this one, okay? Untitled because I haven't saved it. Now, if you save this, okay? If you save this, okay, let's try to save this. So suppose we're working on this. Okay, so let's run this first. This is just the template, the default summary cards. I showed this to you last time. And then the plot of the pressure. Okay, there you go. All right. Okay, before before I continue further, let me just uh, let me just cite to you where this where this file, this RMD file, and take note the interface of RMD looks different from our Quarto, right? In terms of formatting the text, the font, Quarto is a lot better. This is now it it's actually a an advancement of R Markdown. Okay, this is quote unquote the new R Markdown version. Okay, but let's just study first R RMD, the R Markdown file. All right. Now, how will I save this? So if I save this file, save us. Okay. File save us. What do you notice, class? Where is it being saved? It is being saved in the folder in the in the R project that we created for time series, right? Automatically. You don't need to specify where the file will be saved. It because you created the file inside that R project, then it will save it on inside that pro project. So let me just say this trial two again. Trial two. Okay, I'm saving it as trial two, save. All right, what do you notice now? Notice that trial two here already exists. It's this one, it's this file, okay? So that if I, for example, I accidentally deleted this, okay? All right, so what will happen? The, the good thing here is it's that it's in the R project itself here. Okay. How about this one? A file that I, I did not save. I did not save this, right? That this trial one. If I delete this, okay. What will happen if I save it? If I save this, okay, automatically again it will ask us for the file name and it will be inside the R project. Okay, so let me just cancel it. Okay, and then I will not save this. Don't save. All right. So we're back to the original file, right? Now, when I open the R project, the time series project, so let me close this. Close. Close. Okay, so let me just save. All right. Okay, so let me, okay, where am I? Let me go to desktop. I hope you're able to follow class. I just closed the R, R file. Notice that no R file is open. If you take a look at this, it's not 
Uh, there's no R, R file open here, no RMD file. So if I go to the folder once again, to the R project, Finlich K32, T1 2023 to 2024. If I click this, and then if I open this particular project time series, all right, take note, this one, class. If I open this one, let me open this one. This R, this R project. If I click this one, then automatically it will open the R project itself. Okay. You can see now here time series again. Here, time series. All right. And then together with that are the, and this is the uh, project directory. And this is the file that we saved a while ago, trial two, right? If I click this, it automatically opens here, there. So that's one advantage, okay? Same thing, of course, if you open trial two in the folder that we created. If I open trial two, suppose I open this trial two. Okay, so it opened the same thing. Okay, so let me pause for a while. Any questions? Yes, Yana, please. Uh, sir, for me, the the in the file, sir, the R data and the R history also appeared. Is there anything relevant about those two points where they uh, came? Wait, huh? wait. So let me stop share. Okay. So Okay, Iana, I stay. St I stop sharing. Could you share your screen, please? Okay, so same lang naman po with what was shown earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, because these two files appeared out of nowhere. I want to know what their significance or like if there's anything that uh, triggered. Karon ka our data. Did you did you click yung data kanina? Okay. You click you click that please yung our that, that our data. Okay, may see. Here po. Uh, Nag-load ng data. Okay, what did it load? Time series. It loaded the data. I'm not sure what it loaded. If you click, di ba yung click that, di ba? Tapos ito lumabas sa, sa console. May lumabas na... Clicking that means uh, means uh, creating this function called load. Tapos may linode siya. Linode niya yung, yung it loaded documents, finlets, K32, time series, okay, and then slash that R data. Now, I'm not sure what happened, uh, why this appeared. No? How about the others? Let's ask the others. Did this also appear in your case? Kindly. Ah, uh, uh, nag automatic siya no? nag R data. Is this is this what you're asking? Yes, sir. So what's the what's your question there? Uh, automatic siya nag. Uh, I, I think the R that that R data will prepare. Uh, I think it's a an add in to R that will that uh, is used in order to accept data when you load it to. The R project itself. Did any? Did every one of you got this also, class? That uh, that R data, and also that R history, because this will record. If we click this R that history, you notice that these are the codes that we have uh, uh, used in in our trial too. There, so that R hist R history will record all the codes that you have used in your 
in your R project. So this is a recording of that. Thank you, sir. Okay, because later on you might want to review the codes. So the, automatically the R project will give us a, a recording of all the codes that you used in your in your R, R MD or R file or R script. Okay. Uh, did you answer about that class? Did you have also? Where is that? Where's our chat? Okay, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. How about the others? So the, you also get the R history and the R, R data. Okay, that, that's a default. No? Could others please chat also? If they also got the, that R data. So one R history lang, no? So si Alvi R history lang. Now, uh, I'm not sure why it doesn't reflect the R data. We'll, we'll try to discover that, no? Kasi usually, pag nag-default, when, uh, when we save an R project, usually it includes the R that data here and the R history. Now, we'll have to... I haven't met that instance when the R that data, that R data is not reflected. So as your assignment, I'll be kindly check why the R that data is not loading. I, I haven't seen the others respond, please. Were you able to get that, that R data and then both? Okay, thank you. Thank you. So uh, Alvi had a an issue there so i'm not i'm not sure yet about uh, the answer to that why it did not load that r data we'll try to find that out no i'll be if you can if you can uh, uh, google that or chat gpt why the r that r data does not load uh, who's who raised his hand what's this you me sir i have a question lang sir with regards okay. to the city thing yeah ishan yes um, please so when we save it sir like Example, we save it one time and then we add more we add more code or whatnot. Then we save it again. It automatically gets saved or we have to go through the whole process again of saving. Uh okay. So why don't we uh, why don't you share your screen, Ishan? The best way to answer that is to take a look at what happens. Kindly share your screen, Ishan. That's a good question. So let's see. Uh, wait long, sir. Sige lang. Kasi I'm using my I'm using my phone share and then Ah okay um, okay. I'm using so, my laptop for coding. Ah okay okay. So okay, so let me let me answer the uh, question of Ishan myself, okay? So share. Okay, the question of Ishan was if we are for example, we're here, right? We're here trial 2. Okay, so guide me with your question, Ishan. And if I add another code chunk here, by the way, what's the shortcut for code yeah, chunk? Code. Control add, Alt yeah. I, right? If you want to mm -hmm. add another code code chunk, the shortcut is Control Alt I for Windows users. Let me Control Control plus Alt plus I. Okay. If you're a Mac user, it's a Command. Uh, command is it function or could you kindly check command option I think command option I for Mac users is it command function or command option kindly confirm please Mac users command it... option sir okay, thank you it's command option and then I so that's the shortcut to create a code chunk because this is this will take quite a long time to type. Okay, and then as I said, a practice is to always name your code chunk. So let's just, I'll just name it as Bob, just as an example, all right? So the question of Ishan was, if I, let's say I, uh, I, I type another code here, plot, uh, if you recall the example we had last time, air passengers, this is a pro, this is a preloaded data set. Okay, so I type this and then I run this. Okay, so I have 
modified or changed my file because I added another file. Okay. So, Ishan, your question is, if I save this, like file, save, is that what you mean? Yes, sir. Like, if you added something, you just have to keep clicking save, like, as you go yeah. along. Or in fact, Control S will do. Control S. Uh, control S. All right. Thank control you. S, that's saving it. And then if I close this, all right, so asking us again, although we saved it already, save. All right, so I already closed it. And if I open it, either I open trial two or I open this one, the R project itself. So as expected, it will <clears throat> provide us with the, okay, here. Although, what, what do you see? Okay, yeah, updated siya, di ba? And also the R, R history will still be here. If I click R history, okay, take note. Okay, any code that I wrote, even in the console, control alt I, okay, and then the, uh, and then since I opened uh, R again, so it it once again uh, it once again recorded this because this can be found in at, here at the beginning here, right? And then it also recorded the last code that I wrote, plot air passengers. Okay. So sometimes when you write a code here in console, uh, for example, I write. Uh, I write square root of, uh, let's say, 100, and then raise to the uh, 25, sample only. So I wrote the code in the console and not here in the script. OK, if I save this, Control S, and then I close this again, unstable the internet go. All right, and then I want I open once again my project. Okay, what happened? Did it run the the uh, code that I uh, that I I wrote a while ago is it recorded here? Class? No. Sir. No. If I click our history, what happened? So hindi na reflect dito, no. But my uh, my question is, how come the Control Alt I was 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 recorded a while ago? What's the difference? How did I write control out I a while ago, class? Why didn't it run the <clears throat> 100 race to the, uh, what was that? Square root of 100 raised to the 25. What do you think, class? Or let, let, let me use another example. What if I, what happens if I put another one here? So Diamonds is a, uh, is a data set also that comes preloaded. What if I run here structure Diamonds? Okay, sorry, it's not Diamonds. Diamond. Oh, I think I need to load this. It's not preloaded. Let me see. Oh, yeah, it's it's diamond, not I oh, know, not yet. Uh diamond, I think. If I want to okay. Diamond. This is the help. You can you can uh type uh double question mark, then diamond. 
Is it diamond or diamonds? It's loading. I think this is with the, uh, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, this is with ggplot2 or tidyverse. Okay, here. All right, so it's with, uh, it's with ggplot2, it's diamonds, okay? It's diamonds. So uh, this, this data comes with ggplot2. So we cannot just access this, you have to load ggplot2. Okay, so while we're here, let's just discuss. If I want to access this uh, this Diamonds data set, then I will have to install ggplot2. How do you install a particular package? I discussed that with you before. So install that package, yes. Kindly uh, follow along. And then double quotes ggplot2, okay? So that's how you install a package. A package, as we said, while ago are sets of uh, programs, are sets of codes that you can use in running particular functions in R. So for example, ggplot2 has so many functionalities that you can use for data visualization. So if I install that, install, and then you cannot automatically access, you cannot automatically access uh, a particular package like ggplot2, you will have to, uh, in order to access the functionalities, you will have to load it okay, by using library or, so if I want to use ggplot2, its functionalities, I, I must type library and then ggplot2, or you can use, this is a comment, hash pound sign, that's a comment, which means that, that will not be run by R or re require ggplot2. So these two functions do the same thing, okay? Uh, what I want to point out here is that when you load a particular package in R, it's not automatically available. The functionalities of that package is not available. You will have to install it first and then use library or require, okay? So once you have loaded this, control enter, then the functionalities now of uh, of uh, ggplot2 will now is now available so let's see structure diamonds the diamonds data set okay the diamonds data set is found in ggplot2 so we can access that because it's already uh, it's uh, we have loaded ggplot2 okay what happened okay, i'm having problems with my r all right, so this is the structure, right? So let me rerun that. If you want to access previous codes, you can just press the uh, up and down. Okay, take a look at this. So I'm pressing the up and down arrow. I'm pressing up for me to be given the previous code, up, up, up. So every time I press up, it will uh, bring me to the previous codes that I wrote. Okay, so here, structure diamonds, I run this again. All right, in the cache and space, okay. So it gives us the, uh, the, the structure, tells us what type of, uh, of number, what type of data, uh, your variable in that code is. All right, uh -huh. I'm running out of time. I just have to say, class, that, okay, let me go here. Because for your, for your, for our output, we just don't want any, and just any output. Okay, so let me see. Let me share with you some, okay. You can, you can just type, you can just Google, Okay, not this one. Okay, let's just Google. I'll create, create 
Yeah, a research output using R markdown. Your your cases in this subject will be more on research outputs. So there should be a way for you to uh, present your output. Okay, so you can, there are many instructional materials on this. There are video recordings, how to create an R markdown research report. You can view this. And there are also some instructional materials. Okay, let me just show you some, I, I hope I have it here. Okay, uh, these are some of the examples of the references. Okay, uh, I'll not show this anymore because I'll leave you, I'll leave it up to you, class to look at some examples. Okay, so I'm running out of time. It's almost time. All right, so let me just show this. Where is that? All right, here is an example of, of a dissertation written in R Markdown. Let me share this link to you. And there are thousands and thousands of other references class. So I would encourage you to start learning already how to create a research output, a paper using R Markdown. Okay, because all the codes and the text should be coming from the R Markdown itself. So uh, this is all about advantages of using R Markdown for writing PDF documents for your, in our case, for our research paper. All right, so write your dissertation in R Markdown. If it can be done in a dissertation, how much more can it can be done in a, uh, a simple research output for our subject? For example, uh, this uh, in your in your cases, you should be able to generate the title page. Okay, so you can copy the uh, the uh, logo of DLSU and then the university, the title of your uh, paper and then your names and then in partial fulfillment. This can easily be done in R. Okay, if you're doing this in Google Docs or in in uh, in Word, you will have to copy paste the image of the logo, for example, of the LSU. In R, it's a standalone thing. This is the this is actually the function. This one. Okay, and it's so powerful because this will now control. Take a look at the YAML note. This is the YAML. So you have here title output. And it's not that it's you you can already put here the how to how how to uh, format the header, how to format floating, etc. Uh, what's good about this document is that it explains, okay, for this one, for example, it explains. Okay, so this is the example. What's the float about? What's the st section styling, etc. So it has explanations here. Okay, float is for floating objects like figures and type and tables. All right. So I think it's almost time. So kindly go over this class, uh, and I'll also share the video that I had uh, with the other class because we were able to discuss this in greater detail. Unfortunately, in our case. I, I missed 20 minutes because I thought I shared this, the uh, Zoom link with you, okay? So I'll just share with you two, uh, two video files, the one that we discussed now and the other section because I was able to discuss this more with them. So just, just kindly uh, watch that video, okay? And there are also other videos that you can use as reference, okay? So it's time, thank you so much. Are there any questions before we go, class? Kindly chat in the chat box. So far, how is our discussion? Is it okay? Is our pace okay? Okay, good. Thank you. All right, good. Thank you so much, class, for your participation. Thank you so much for your feedback. Okay, I'll see you on Tuesday. Uh, we'll be face-to-face. -face. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir. Uh, thank you, Paul. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, those of you who will have your attendance check, please remain. Who's going to have this attendance check?
Yes, sir. Yes. Name, please. Julio Raimundo. Julio Raimundo. Did you update the uh, yes, Google sir. sheet? Okay. Julio Raimundo. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Sir. Oh, yes. Yes. Sino to? Jacob. As this month po, until next month po kasi hindi po ako makapag face to face since I'm currently in uh, Doha, Qatar po. Where? Think, uh, Doha, Qatar po. Nasa Doha ka? Naku. Ba't ano yes, dyan ka? Eh, classes uh, na. Uh, Nag-aalaga po ako ng kapatid na may cancel po sir. Oh. Pero babalik din po ako younger, next month. Younger? Young, ano, sister? Brother? Sister po. Talaga? Elder sister? Oh. Huh? Yes po, elder sister po. Ako, sorry to hear that, Jacob. But doon na sa base? Oh po, di, dito po sa kapatid base, sir. Ako, nakaka-ano naman. Nakaka-panghina ng loob naman. Pero be strong, ha? Be strong. Yes po, sir. So, paano, na, paano kaya yun? Ano? Kasi... Uh, mamimiss mo yun paano yung recording kaya wala tayong recording pa yung recording ay nga po sir pag face to face po kasi wala po recordings pero pag online kaya wala naman po o nga pero malaki rin mamimiss mo nun kasi oh, oh, paano yung cont sir. continuity ay nga po sir Mas, uh, ano na lang po sir uh, I'll do whatever I can po sige para sige. Isa mag mga catch up po tapos yung mga yung mga files pa rin ipo-post ko naman sa Canvas yun eh. So, yes. pwede mo namang i ano i i i access yan, no? Yes, po, sir. Okay, thank you for informing me, Jacob. Kaya pala you, wa, kaya wala ka nung first session. Nung face to face po wala po. Oh, yes, po. Wala nasa Doha ka pa. Yes po. Okay, sige. Ingat ka diyan, ha? Thank you, sir. Ingat din po. Okay, sige. Thank you. Thank Yes, Giana. Ah, po, pa check lang. Na-disconnect po ako when I was about to unmute a while ago. So... Attendance. Ano yung family name mo? Ah, po. Nick Dao po. Nick Dao. Okay. Ah, po. Yan. Okay na. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you.